So the day has finally arrived. After we took a look at that Super NT from Analog, they reached out to me and actually sent over the Mega SG, which is out today. Should be shipping and everything if you've ordered or pre-ordered or whatnot, or maybe you're looking into it. Uh, they should be shipping out now. And they wanted me to take a look at it. You're gonna see a bunch of videos go up and honestly at its price point of $190, I recommend taking a look at as many videos as possible because there's gonna be all kinds of games tested on it, combinations done, and it should be pretty interesting to see. We're gonna be taking it apart here. I'm also gonna be plugging it in, checking it out. We'll take a look at the menus and everything. We'll play a game on it and uh, just kind of take a look at it overall. So it should be really fun. So thanks to Analog for sending this one out. Also gonna be using the uh, the 2.4 gigahertz M30 from 8-Bit Doe to kind of work my way through it and everything. They sent both of these over for me to check out. So once again, thanks to Analog. So let's start with an unboxing of the Mega SG. And we're actually going to take a look at the top a bit here. 1080p HDMI. It is using FPGA, so it is attacking the, uh, playing the games with hardware. It's probably the same Cyclone chip that we saw with the Super NT, so I don't really expect them to have to do too much with it to be crazy, considering it's probably just as easy to run Genesis games in terms of, like, power, like, kind of a chip you need to play Super Nintendo games, and they did a very good job with the Super NT. Uh, HDMI cable, USB cable, and everything, and then there's also an analog Master System game cartridge adapter because this can not only play Sega Genesis or Mega Drive games, as you may know, um, out west, uh, it actually plays Master System games as well, which is really, really cool. So once I take that off, here is our system here with the nice analog uh, logo on it. Here, I'm gonna put that to the side and we'll kind of go over it a bit here. Taking this guy up, there's actually a lot more in here than the Super NT had, which is pretty neat. So this has a riser right here. And this is actually for the Sega CD because this will also work with your actual Sega CD. So if you have a Gen 2 or I guess a Gen 1, it'll work fine with that. So that's actually really neat to see that. And we're going to look at that when we kind of go around the, um, the outside of it here. A little manual here for you with the analog logo on the front. We have, of course, a power cable, so it uses micro USB on the back. A power brick, which uh, should be rated at at least... Two, uh, two amps at least. I believe that's what it says on the bottom of the system at five volt, two amps. So this should be, uh, like I have, a, I have a two and a half amp brick that I use for a lot of these and uh, they all work fine. So let's, let me just take a quick look at this guy because I know it has their analog logo on it there. This one's a uh, 2100 milliamp uh, brick, so a 2.1 amp, which did plenty of juice there, obviously. Uh, HDMI cable that is emblazoned with the analog logo on it. And then we have our adapter. So this will actually work with Master System games. So if you're a person who collects Master System games as well, you can actually pop them in and this will work. So this is actually gonna sit right on top and allow you to pop it right on, on there. So I'm gonna take this guy off and kind of demonstrate that here. So we have our analog and it sits right in there. And then you can put your master system game directly on top and it works just the same. So it's actually a really cool idea and feature to have there. Now, of course, Genesis was already capable of playing uh, these uh, master system games through a power base adapter. So like, it only makes sense that they'd be able to achieve the same thing through hardware in an FPGA system. Now, looking around the system, we have our actual Genesis ports on the front. This will use Genesis controllers as you already have them. Or if you want to get wireless ones like the 8-bit dough, you just get the Genesis controller and it'll work fine. Has the headphone jack on the front too. Kind of a callback to the original Genesis there. SD card slot on the side. Now the Super NT also had an SD card slot and it's supposed to be used for firmware. However, we eventually got to the point where you could load ROMs through it and I don't really expect things to be much different with this. Just to be honest, I have a feeling we'll get to a point where you can load ROMs through this SD card slot. On the back, HDMI, micro USB here. On the top, we have a power and reset button. There is an LED right here and it can actually be changed in the options to all different types of colors, rainbow effects and everything. It's actually uh, really cool. Pins inside are very solid looking. They're, uh, they're very clean and very solid, so it's actually really cool. Overall, it's pretty heavy too, which again, we saw the Super NT where they put weights on the bottom. I expect a similar idea to be done here. And it has that rubberized grip kind of on the bottom, so it's very hard to move around. So if you get like a cartridge, like we have Sonic 2 here, for example, and you pop it in, it's gonna be hard to kind of move it around when you're trying to drop it in there, and then you can kind of hold it and push it out. Uh, feels good though on the... Uh, on the cartridge when you actually pop it in. It doesn't feel like one of those cheaper uh, like Retron 
systems or anything. It is a very solid click when you pop it in. Okay, so here we are at the menu now. Let's go ahead and look around it a bit. Uh, this is, of course, using the M30 controller, and there's a couple things here. So they did put Ultra Core on here, which, if you remember, they tweeted out that they were going to have an exclusive game for this system. It comes directly on the system, so you don't have to have a cartridge or anything in it to play it. It'll just play directly off of it, which we'll check out in a second. As for settings, there is a lot, I mean, a lot of options to, to go through here. You can check out all the different resolutions. I have it at 1080p by, uh, 1080 by uh, 60 frames per second, of course. Um, and they have, they even tell you what your monitor supports and everything, which is cool. So I've been playing this technically on a monitor to get that lower uh, refresh rate and everything response time. Screen sizes, you can play around with all of that as well. I have it on square pixels. Scan lines, so you can add in all the different scan lines if you'd like normal or hybrid. You can play with the depth of them and everything. And then you also have scalers, a ton of them. HQ, 2X, up through 4X. You can also scale differently there. X-Ray. When we load up Sonic, I'll actually show it to you because it's a bit easier to see as it's kind of changing and everything. And then they also have uh, they also have cheats in here as well, which is really funny. The LED options. You can actually change the front LED to like all kinds of stuff, which is really funny. There's like a rainbow effect you can do. Uh, I, th I like that a lot. I thought that was pretty funny. You can change all that around. I actually sold on rainbow effect right now. Startup options can be changed, uh, so you can go like title right to cartridge. I would just go to the menu. Uh, just just to be a bit easier so I can check all this stuff. I'm actually gonna put that back to the standby color They also have cheats and everything which is funny audio a ton of audio stuff you can go through as well Which was cool. You can change around just literally the cartridge audio volume if you want uh, A lot of stuff to do here when it comes to going through all your audio There's the enable cartridge and CD audio as well a lot of stuff happening there, which is pretty neat and let's actually go into the tools because they do allow you to do cheat codes as well. If you'd like to enable them, you can. Uh, and which is pretty funny, they have a full controller test. So if you want to do a controller test, you can. And we'll actually, well, let's play Ultra Core. Let's do that. So it'll load up, loads up pretty quick, as you can see there. And we're in and we're playing. So right away, it's, it, I mean, it looks good on the screen already. And that's without any filters. I just have it straight up. It runs really, really well. So far, like Sonic is very fast. And I know in emulators that it's weird that like <laughs> Sonic struggles in even the one that Sega put out. Uh, what's really funny is Analog has successfully made a system that's probably better than whatever Sega is going to make in their plug and play system. It is more expensive, obviously. It's 190 so it's not like a cheap system. But I've said this before, I'd rather pay for the quality rather than buy multiple systems that are end up being junk in terms of emulation cons like constantly and this actually has like this exclusive game which is cool but the fact that it comes with it it has some insanely good looking uh visuals on your screen for a genesis uh game to be put on like uh when you're big screens let me actually go back here i have it set to down and start so it'll let us right onto the uh to the menu here and then i'm actually gonna run the cartridge this is sonic 2 so it's gonna load up pretty quick um and uh there you go already rolling we are going to go through some of the filters because when I noticed if I'm playing and I go to the the actual menu, I can play around with them and I can I can actually get a pretty good look as to how different they are. So we're in, of course, Emerald Hill Zone 1. So I'm down in the settings now. I go to video and scalers and you can, of course, see kind of the background there as I go through them. So we have HQ2X and it kind of makes it, a, it gives it a smoother look. It, it kind of edges out all of those hard edges and makes them a bit smoother. You have HQ 3X, and it basically just uh, just just makes the effect a, a lot more apparent. You can also scale it, and they have X-Ray, which was weird. <laughs> I thought X-Ray was kind of funny, so it, yeah, it makes it like black and white like that. Uh, but then we can just do something like, like I like no, no scaler still looks really good, even though it's a lot of hard edges and pixel edges. I don't know, I, I actually like that look compared to the softer look of the HQ 2X or even like 3X. I just like the no scaler. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm like old school with that and everything. But they do also have, let me go back here, we'll go to scan lines and we'll drop some of those on. So if you want to have like that kind of that old school CRT look, you can do that as well. Um, but honestly, in, in the regular like setup that they have here, it just looks really, really good. Like I, I'm actually really happy with how it, how it all looks just like default. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
when I had it plugged in through HDMI and everything, it, it just sounded great. Like I was really happy with the way it sounded through my TV, my monitor, uh, and even on like a larger TV, like a 65 inch TV, for example, that I use upstairs, it still looked fine. Like it looked very, very good. Uh, and I have to say, this is probably the best I've had in terms of a Genesis experience, like ever. Well, in terms of picture, sound quality, features, everything. It's, it's, it's analog and it's them, of course, putting forward a more premium product at a, I think, a fair price for what's in it. 190 might seem kind of expensive, but if you're a big time collector and enthusiast, you're probably okay with it. All right, so now that we've played it, unboxed everything, let's also take it apart and kind of take a look at the build quality. I have a feeling it's gonna be very, very similar to what the Super NT was, which was super high build quality. So I'm looking forward to that. On the side here is actually where you would put your Sega CD on. So it does have that full attachment. Uh, very nice clean pins there. You just kind of pop it on the side and it locks in. And then of course you have that uh, kind of that pad on the bottom that will help it kind of sit up. Otherwise it might kind of, if you put it on there, it might kind of slope, uh, slope down a little bit there. So that spacer just kind of holds it up really well. Similar thing as we saw with the Super NT where there are screws under each one of these padding. So you kind of lift it up a little bit, a little bit of a peel up there. And then you see the little screw hole here. So I'm gonna have to go around. There's only four screws. I'll get them all out. And then we should be able to start opening this guy up. Again, if it's like Super NT, it's very quick to open. They also have it kind of clipped together as well, just to kind of help, I guess, just to make it feel a little more solid. So when that's off, we have some of our buttons here. Uh, very, very straightforward buttons. We also have one, of course, that allows the LED to pass through there. And here's our board. Honestly, it's very similar looking to the Super NT with a couple of exceptions. Now, it is, as you're seeing here, still using that same uh, Cyclone ship from uh, Altera up here. And we kind of talked about that in the uh, Super NT video. So it's up here, like from this side up, looks very, very much the same. HDMI scalar chip over there. We have kind of the RAM here and everything. So it's all pretty straight up here. Few differences though that I noticed, the, as you can see here, these are actually the controller ports that are running through a cable to the board, which is a nice, I think, change to have it that way, just because it's, of course, uh, replaceable. However, I don't think this is gonna be sold separately or anything. So maybe that's just easier for them manufacturing for these Genesis ports, as opposed to like the Super Nintendo ports. And we have, of course, the addition of a headphone jack here, and that is being run to a clip here as well. So that is something different. Both of these are modular as opposed to hooking up to the board and soldered down. And then we have our different tactile buttons here. Kind of hear them. One of course with the LED, one without, and that's your start and reset or your power and reset buttons there. Analogs printed down here alongside some pin connectors that I assume are probably for debugging. They did put some screws next to the cartridge slot here, which is awesome. Uh, that's what you want to do with a lot of these systems. Sometimes I don't always see that, but because it takes a lot of stress, obviously from being popped off, uh, if you have screws there to hold the board at that exact spot, it really helps with that. So let's go ahead and take those off. We're expecting to find several weights on the bottom uh, just to help weigh it down because otherwise I will tell you it would feel like nothing probably uh, without them. And then of course we do have uh, cables up here I have to unplug for the headphone and then the controller slots. I also want to point out they have a, a just a screw right there dead center of those controller ports. So I noticed when I plugged it in they felt very very solid uh, like from plugging in with um, the 8-bit dough plug there. Even if I had to push really hard on it, they didn't really move much. And then I would explain why having a screw like directly next to them. So it was a bit harder to get out only because we have this large Sega CD uh, connector here on the side. Uh, our Cyclone, again, Cyclone chip from Altera is there. Uh, it's again, very similar to what we saw with the Super NT. Nothing too crazy here. I do like, again, that this is just this large adapter on the side, large chunk of an adapter for your Sega CD. I think that's really funny. Awesome that they got that to work, by the way. That was really cool to hear about that. And yes, there's our signature weight, and I do like that they seem to have the analog symbol in there as well as part of the weight. That's actually really funny. I think it's completely glued to the bottom, so it's not gonna come up very easily or anything. But I do like that, it's a nice little touch just to finish it up with the analog symbol. They, pick, they put the analog symbol over everything and I guess I would as well if I were putting this kind of thing together. It's just really funny. But board wise, just as solid as the Super NT board. It doesn't flex very easily, it's very thick. And it's just overall a pretty well built system. I don't think you're gonna have any issues. Quality wise, it's there. Uh, the SD card slot I'm sure will be opened up to the point where you'll be loading all of your ROMs and everything you really wanna do that. But if you're an enthusiast who was maybe questioning or concerned about the quality of these systems when looking at the price, 
Don't have to worry about it. This is a very, very solid board, and the technology in here is pretty awesome as well. Again, having hardware rather than have to emulate and introduce things like lag and, and input latency and stuff. This is it right here for somebody who wants to do things like speed run online and you want to use HDMI for streaming and stuff. This is a good investment for that. So the Sega CD edition is pretty cool. Uh, overall, I have to say it's a, it's a pretty solid system right there. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to do it for the Mega SG look. And you know what? I have to say they've come a long way. Analog started with like a $500 NES system that was definitely out of the price range for a lot of people. The quality was good, but the price was high. Now we're looking at systems from them that are high quality, all hardware based systems that are great for enthusiasts at sub $200 pricing. And we're also in a world now with wireless Genesis and Super Nintendo controllers that are also pretty good. It's really neat to see kind of the retro scene get this look where you're getting these systems that are through HDMI, you can play them on your monitors or your big screen TVs and even have an easier time streaming them with better picture. It's a good time right now. So I do like the Mega SG. If you're willing to spend the money for it, you're gonna get your money's worth. The fact that it's compatible with Sega CD, Master System, they put the time in. So I'm pretty happy to see this product happen. And again, thanks to Analog for sending it over. Uh, let me know what you guys think about the Mega SG though, and if it's something you're interested in or if it's a bit out there in terms of pricing. I'll just be curious to see what firmware updates come out and if this SD card slot does get unlocked for ROMs. But like I said with the Super NT, it's just a good system overall. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.